Hello everyone. Welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. Some of you have been asking me to create a video on yellow belt or white belt Six Sigma training. In this video, I am going to give you training on tools and methodologies used in yellow belt and white belt Six Sigma certifications. So in some organizations, yellow belt is the beginning of the Six Sigma certifications or in some organizations it is called white belt they both means one and the same thing in some of the organizations where lean is practiced it is equivalent to a lean practitioner kind of certification so it's a very basic quality certification which happens in an organization so for yellow belt or white belt certifications dmac methodology is used but the kind of data analysis that is being performed in a green belt or a black belt project it is very less in yellow belt or white belt project certifications. But yes, data usage is the heart of DMAC methodology and all the analysis and decisions are based on data. So that is why we will learn some of the data tools as well in this particular video. So let's begin. So before we go ahead, we should understand what is Six Sigma. The term Sigma is used to designate the distribution or spread about the mean of any process or procedure. So it is very important to understand it is a distribution around the mean which gives us the sigma value. Sigma capability measures the capability of the process to produce defect free output. A defect is anything that results in customer dissatisfaction. If you look at the table on the right hand side, it tells you what is the sigma value and what are the defects per million opportunities. At Six Sigma, we have only 3.4 defects per million opportunities. And when our process capability is at Five Sigma, the DPMO value is 233. If you look at this particular graph, when we move from Two Sigma to Six Sigma, our error rate reduce exponentially. So as defects go down, the Sigma capability goes up. That is what we should always have in our minds. So the aim of any project or any process improvement is to reduce the number of defects. So before we go ahead into the training, we should also learn the data and the data types. So there are two data types. One is called discrete and the other one is called continuous. The continuous data is measured on a continuous scale and can be measured to infinity or to any decimal precisions. For example, data of length. Length data can be broken down further saying 71 meters, 30 centimeters. So 71.30. So you can put a dot and write further. It becomes your continuous data. The other type of data is discrete. So discrete data is of three types, binary, ordinal and count. Binary data is where we have only two outputs, which is yes, no, pass, fail, in, out. Ordinal data is the rank or rating or definite scale. For example, employee satisfaction survey score. So the rating is from 1 to 5, 5 being the best. And if you want to give 4.5, you can't give 4.5. So it is something which you can't break it further. So that is why it is discrete. And the last one is the count data. Count data is discrete count, like number of employees in a call center, number of calls that you have taken in a call center, or number of products made in a manufacturing environment. These all are count type of discrete data. So we will learn DMAC methodology here as well. So the first phase is define. In the define phase, team has to create a business case and a project charter. So these are the six elements of a project charter. Business case, problem statement, goal statement, scope of the project, milestones and team charter any project the first thing that the team has to do is to create a project charter so in business case we have to put down the business background why we want to do this project and what happens if we don't do this project means the kind of losses that we are incurring should be mentioned in the business case the problem statement should be quantifiable problem and it should be backed up with data for example if we are measuring data for last six months and we say that the error rate of the process over the last six months is 15%. So that means it's a big problem. And the goal statement should be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. Means it should be smart. So a time bound goal statement is something we should always aim at. For example, we take the goal statement of reducing the error rate from 
15% to 1% by December 2022 would be a smart goal statement. The scope of the project should be defined clearly. What is in scope and what is out of scope of the project? And milestone date should also be given. What is the start date and end date of all these phases? DMAC has five phases. Define, measure, analyze, improve and control. So we should keep two weeks for each of these phases for a yellow belt kind of a project. And then comes the team charter. There we have a champion, a sponsor, a mentor in the project. What is, who is the process owner for which we are doing this project? and which all are the team members which are supporting the project. Second phase of DMAG methodology is measure phase. In this phase, we identify the potential root causes to a problem. And the best way to do that is to do a brainstorming session. And the kind of graph that you are seeing on my slide is a fishbone diagram. So a fishbone diagram helps you identify the potential root causes to a particular problem. At the head of the fish, you write the problem statement and then you have six different heads man machine material method and mother nature and you identify the various sub causes under these broad heads so i have detailed video on project charter fishbone diagram i will attach the link in the description box below for your reference so if you look at this this looks like more for a manufacturing kind of an environment so if you look at the services environment, it becomes people, process, procedure and place. Let us take this example of high defect rate. So high defect rate under people, it could be because of the knowledge gap that they have. It could be because of the careless mistakes that the people are making. Under process, the process is not documented. Under procedure, there is no feedback procedure for the team. And under place, the night shift makes more error. So it is... Uh, more to do with the environment place is more to do with the environment so they are making more errors uh, so this is how a fishbone diagram can help identify the potential root causes to a particular problem in the major phase now comes the analyze phase in the analyze phase the most common tool that can be used in a yellow belt kind of a project is a pareto chart pareto chart works on pareto principle which is also known as 80 20 rule it says roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. So that is what we have to keep in mind when we understand or perform data analysis. There are errors which are being made in the process. Some errors which are salutation errors, spelling errors, incorrect name, incorrect readings. We have 10 error types and against them we have written the count of errors in these particular error type for the last 6 months. Now we are going to perform or create a Pareto chart and understand which are the top 80% contributing error types. For that we are going to use an analytical tool which is Minitab. So I have pasted data in column C1 and C2. C1 column has error types and C2 column has the count of errors. And for Pareto chart we will go to Stat Quality Tools Pareto chart. Under defects or attribute data, we will enter error type and in frequencies, we will enter count and we will click OK. So if you look at this, the top four error types contributing to 80% of the problem is salutation errors, spelling errors, incorrect name and incorrect readings. Considering all of them, we need to figure out from the people perspective as well. Who all are the people in the process who are making these errors? Who all are 80% contributors who are making these errors? So let us understand or let us create another Pareto which is on these four error types only. Now I have pasted data in C3 column and C4 column. In C3 column, associates who are making these errors these top 80% errors, their names are listed and in column C4, count of errors that they are making are listed. We will again go to stat, quality tools and Pareto chart. In defects or attribute data, we will enter associates and in frequencies, we will enter top 80% errors and we click OK. So if we look at this graph, there are five agents, AF, AA, AC, AB and AD. They are contributing to 80.4% of the errors. 
So now if the team leader has to create a training plan, he will create a training plan on the four error types, salutation error, spelling error, incorrect name and incorrect readings. And he will provide this training to these five associates only, which is AF, AA, AC, AB and AD. It will resolve majority of his problem. Moving on to the improve phase in a yellow belt training. So the tool that we are going to learn is called YY analysis. It means that you will ask why that many times till the time you get an actionable solution. So in our case, there was less trained staff. And we said AF, AA, AC and there were two more staff members which are less trained. So why are they less trained? They are not properly trained. That is why they are making these errors. The second why is why they were not trained properly because the training plan not created for this particular batch. And the solution to this problem is create a robust training plan for all upcoming batches. And plus obviously train these people who are not properly trained. The second is manual errors. There are manual errors, there are KLS mistakes which are happening. Why these manual errors are happening? Because of the KLS mistake. And why KLS mistake? Not part of the performance appraisal. So quality is not part of the performance appraisal. That is why people are not paying attention to the quality parameter of the transactions when they are processing. And the solution is that make accuracy a parameter for performance appraisal. And the last one is no feedback procedure. Why there is no feedback procedure? Because it was not established. And why? Because it was not there with the outsource partner as well. So when the process was outsourced, so the customer was also not following a feedback procedure. And that is why, so that is why it was not there from the beginning itself. So the solution is to create a feedback procedure, pass on the feedback to the entire group at the start of the session. The next thing that the team has to do in the improve phase is to create an implementation plan. They can use 4W and 1H. 4W and 1H is a tool which can help you create this implementation plan. What is to be done, when it is to be done, where it is to be done, who will do it and how. The one example that we are giving here is the training that we have to provide to the associates. So when it has to be done on a particular date, where in the boardroom or in the training room, who will do this? The trainer one will do this and how? There is a training module which has been created. On day one, this will be taught. On day two, this will be taught and things like that. So after implementing the solutions, we need to provide a control mechanism to the process. So the control mechanism here is that we will audit five QC cases per person per week. Quality check will be done on five cases. And this will start from April and where it is on the floor, which will happen, who will do this, the quality resource and how there would be a random sampling which will be used. This person who is the quality resource, he also needs to be monitored by a quality manager every week. So quality manager will check whether the quality resource is performing this activity on daily basis or not. And if it is not being performed, then the feedback will be given to the quality resource and it will be enforced. If this control will not be there, the quality will again go back. So that is how a yellow belt or a white belt project is performed. So friends, uh, what I tried to explain here in this particular training is to take you through the five phases of debug methodology with the help of one defined example so that you understand the methodology and you understand the context in which you can use it in your projects. So I hope you like this video and if you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. I will see you in my next upcoming video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.